I just think right now, women, especially in business, this is the year of women. I just know that. Life begins at 150 grand a year. Life gets better at 250, and life gets real good at 500. Nobody can tell me differently on it. When you start teaching something, I feel like that's when you start to master the actual art of it. You and I, when we publish a book, we can go toe-to-toe with any of the New York trade publishers, any of the big-time authors, and we get to compete in that marketplace and then let the market decide whether our stuff is good. People forget sometimes as an entrepreneur, the whole damn point of entrepreneurship is to make money. And now here is The Win with your hostess, serial entrepreneur, marketeer, and chief sexy boss. Have you ever wanted to stop the nine to five grind and start your own company? Do you want to have more control of your income and your time? Then now is that moment to start and grow a successful business. As a female entrepreneur, I have succeeded. I have bit the dust. I have bounced back to growth and prosperity. But this would not have been possible without first taking the leap and owning my own business. But I didn't do it alone. I hired my first business coach 13 years ago. And now I help small businesses, solo practitioners, and professionals double their income and triple their time off. So let me help you too. My gift to you today is a free one-on-one strategy session. So go to coachwithheather.com, coachwithheather.com. And let me help you double your income and triple your time off. Hi, everyone. My name is Heather Havenwood. As you know, thank you so much for being here today. So as you know, I love, love, love to interview female entrepreneurs and it's rare that I get to, believe it or not. I know. Um, So I'm very excited to talk to someone today about that is doing something that I call really in the kind of a guy's world, which is SEO. There's a lot of different technology pieces of online marketing, and usually women stay in a particular wheelhouse. And today I have someone who is more in the tech world, SEO, which is, in my experience, a lot more, uh, a lot more men in it than women, so I'm super excited about that. Rebecca, are you there? I am. Thanks so much for having me. So we're excited. So Rebecca Gill is a well-rounded business has has a well-rounded business background and over 20 years of experience in sales and online marketing. In addition to running the day-to-day activities of web savvy marketing, Rebecca also provides full service SEO consulting courses, boot camps, and so much more. So I'm super excited. Now, first of all, where are you located? I am in Traverse City, Michigan. Michigan. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, I was saying earlier in the intro, which I didn't tell you in the green room, is that I think that a lot of women don't go into the more of the techie side of things. And SEO has a techie side. There's also analytics. I do a lot of stuff with analytics. And um, in my experience, women stay more on the social side and the community side, mm-hmm. the branding side, right? And the sales side. They don't really go into tech. And so I love the fact that you're an SEO. So tell us a little bit more how you got started in all this. I am actually uh, self-taught in SEO. Um, My first, um, you know, job out of college, I discovered technology and fell in love with it. And I ended up working at an ERP software company for um, about 10 years in total. Um, And we had really good software. And if we got in the door with a lead and a prospect, we would win like, you know, 90% of the time. But the problem was, is we didn't have any leads. You know, the sales funnel was just really um, empty. And I, you know, survival mode to be able to fill that sales funnel. I, you know, just taught myself SEO. And that was 15 years ago when there wasn't a whole lot on the internet to learn like there is today. Uh, you know, I did a lot of trial and error. I spent a lot of time at night, you know, like my daughter was watching Teletubby. She was, I think, two at the time. I'm, you know, with my laptop trying to learn as much as I can and try things out. And, um, and that's, you know, that's how I got into it. Um, and I realized, you know, with SEO, you can change the world. And you can do a lot of good both for yourself and others. And I fell in love with it. And while I have, um, you know, not always been full force into SEO because I run an agency too, uh, it is definitely where my passion is. Yeah. So I just kind of want to kind of set the construct for some people because there's a ton of talk around that SEO is dead and it doesn't work anymore. (laughs) You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about. That's why you're giggling. So yeah, it's dead. Does it work anymore? And blah, 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 blah. And I I call spade spade. That's not true. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it does work. 
Uh, link backs are huge. There's all kinds of things in search and it's just, it's still here. Google's not got away with SEO. But if you could just kind of set the context by what you mean SEO today, what does that look like today? So first, SEO isn't dead, right? As long as people have problems and they go to the internet to search for solutions, there's going to be SEO. SEO is just different today than what it was 15 years ago when I learned it. You know, we're not trying to do all of these tricks and, you know, sneaky tactics that we did back in the day uh, and where it was like just cowboy SEOs out there. We could do the wild west of SEO. We could do whatever we wanted. You know, now Google's very structured. It wants, you know, people to focus on usability and the user experience and technical SEO, like structured data and schema is super important, as is security and accessibility and performance, then it's, you know, it is different today than what it was years ago, but it's still alive and well, and it's going to continue to be alive and well because the world uses the internet and they need to be able to find information. So, you know, whatever people say about it being, you know, dead or, you know, no longer relevant, it's, that is completely crap. I hate to say that, but it it is crap. You know, it it has a big, you know, purpose and it it serves businesses, entrepreneurs, you know, it's just, it makes the world go round. It really does. And it makes a big difference. And I'll share kind of a story. I'll have to take some pieces out of it because it has a a dirty piece to it. But I was in a mastermind with a guy who's kind of a, I call him an SEO hacker. You know, he just knows all the (laughs) good black hat, yellow hat, green hat stuff to do. And he talked about uh, a particular story. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because he said SEO can change the world. It can. All right. So he, uh, he knew about this particular situation. Here was the problem. The problem was it was a big, big company, like a Fortune 1000 company. The um, CEO of the company had a name, right? First name, last name. It had the same first name, last name of a man who was a pedophile. Oh. in charge as a pedophile. And this was the SC, the CEO, a different, na- different person, different person, mm-hmm. right? Different face, same name. And anytime you Googled the CEO of the Fortune 1000 company, you got on first page, this other yeah. guy, right? Yeah. So it caused a lot of issues with the company. It caused all kinds of stuff, but they didn't want to get rid of the CEO, right? So uh, he came in. And he, uh, he said that it was like in a big boardroom and he was of course talking to everybody. He didn't, he couldn't visual, he couldn't see who was in the boardroom and they were saying, yeah, well, the CEO is not here today that you can't talk to him, but how do we know you're even real? We've had agency after agency after agency. We spent thousands of dollars to try to fix this. No one's been able to fix this. And he's like, okay, well, check this out. So he goes to this particular website and changes all this stuff within like seconds and he goes, go here. And it changed. Right. And he goes, okay. I don't know what he did. He did something that was like remarkable. And then all of a sudden you heard the CEO say something, wait a minute. Okay. Wait, this guy's real. Like he's in the room the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so he goes, I can fix this for you. Like, okay, fine. Let's fix it. He's like 50 grand and they paid it. Cause they're like, what? Yeah. Cost them that at least in business, right? Mm-hmm. Because someone types a person's name in and they get this image of this pedophile. But my point is, and that, that's a really extreme example, but that's the power of understanding SEO. Oh, absolutely. I mean, because it can take you from no sales to huge sales, or it can take you from a situation like that where you've got something really negatively affecting your business and it can completely turn it around if you know what you're doing or if you are hiring the right people. The key is hiring the right people. I'm dealing right now with a lawyer who has one guy. He told me the whole story. The guy's just whacked, but he went on a ripoff report and said some negative stuff. So he has having to deal with this. Every time someone puts in his name, he's dealing with this, even though the the situation of the case just was weird anyway. um, Yeah, it could really damage a brand reputation reputation of a company Mm -hmm. and or a person. Do you deal a lot right now people trying to get business or do you, are you dealing more with, with reputation? Um, I deal more with businesses working to place their products and services. I have helped uh, and, and coach cause I do, I'll do hourly coaching with people too. Um, you know, uh, actors and musicians who don't like what's on page one for them and really want to change it. And you know, the funny thing is, is when those kind of people come to you, 
Um, most of the time they're scared of the internet, so they don't have much out there about them, which in the absence of information, Google's going to find what it can. Right. And a lot of times it's not what's flattering. And it's like, okay, well, if you want to make this go away, then you need to help Google understand who you are and what you do so it can place better information about you, you know, at the top. Um, and it's same thing with businesses, with, with products and services. If Google feels that you are the answer to solve a peop, you know, someone's problem, it's going to want to rank you by default because it wants to create a positive user experience for its searchers. So, okay, this is great. I love this. So let's go on a reputation when someone comes to you and says, hey, I don't like what I see on page one. And you say exactly what you said. Hey, well, you don't have much out there. So mm-hmm. Google's got to go find something. What, you know, let's two or three or four strategies here. If someone's listening, like, oh, that's me. What can they do? What can they do to really say, hey, I'm going to take ownership of this? Um, yeah. For, first thing would be to make sure that you have a website, right? Um, you, you have to have a website. I don't care what the name of it is. You have to have a website and it has to be populated so Google fully understands that that's you and that you are the owner. Um, and there's, there's person schema you know, that is, which is basically um, behind the scenes code that you can put into your website that's, that's very structured and that Google says, you know, here's what we're listening to. But you can populate this with all these different types of information so that, it can, and you're, you're basically talking Google's language. So Google can say, okay, yes, not only do I understand who they are, I understand this is their official Facebook profile, or this is their Twitter account, this is their YouTube channel, and then you can link Google over to those other properties that you want it to recognize. Um, Another thing is, if you have those social media profiles, you need to actually use them. If you don't use them, Google's not going to want to produce them in search, and that's another thing is like, you know, I go look at these people's profiles, and they're like, well, I don't like what I have. I'm like, well, you've not tweeted for three years. You know, again, absence of information, Google's going to go find something more fresh and more relevant, even if that's negative things about you. Um, And then if there's, you know, third-party sites that have incorrect information about you, reach out to them. At least try that route to see if you can, you know, connect with a human and fix it. Um, I think a lot of times people assume that sites will not update information, but most website owners and, you know, webmasters don't want a bunch of crap on their website. They would like it to be relevant and, you know, correct. Um, So they will, you know, take note to what you say and, and if it's relevant and they can validate it, they'll go, a lot of times we'll go update it. That's a good point. Um, I know for myself, I'm dealing right now on trying to uh, get on, I guess, Google author page or something. You know, that's a big one. The author page, Google author page. Does that make, does that, does that resonate for you? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, <laughs> Google told. had, Google had, um, Years ago, they had like that you could put yourself as an author, but that's yeah. different than what I think you mean today, where Google recognizes you as an author and produce uses um, the information it has to create like a knowledge graph piece of information, like showing your books at the top of the screen when someone yeah. searches for you. So it's different than like the years ago, if people said authorship or you know what I mean? Um, same type of ver- verbiage, but just a different meaning. But yes. So, and that's again, Google being able to find relevant information about you, being able to understand what you have, whether it be pulling information from Amazon or a Wikipedia page or even your own website and, you know, and using that. And then, you know, it just needs to determine that um, other people really care about that, you know, and that you are a a, um, well-recognized author and then it will use that information appropriately. So this is great. I love this. I love this. It's like all teched out stuff. Um, so tell us a little bit, some of your, I know you obviously your clients are uh, probably private, but case studies of things that you've really fixed, some like really crazy case that you've fixed or maybe something cool like that. Oh uh, gosh, I'm trying to think, you know, I will tell you that um, SEO never ceases to amaze me. So when you do keyword research for things like public restroom equipment, you will find the weirdest things in the weirdest people because <laughs> People have lots of fears and fetishes with public restrooms. Those are the kind of things that I find when I'm working with clients. And I'm like, oh, and I, and this was actually a client that I, that was in my local geography, which I never get right. I deal with the people internationally. So I went into their office and I said, you know, I was doing some keyword research on the phrases that we thought that might rank. I go, do you know, there's a lot of fears and fetishes with public restrooms. And they just died laughing and they said, 
we do know, but we didn't want to tell you that. We figured we'd sign contracts with you and let you figure that out yourself. But yeah, that's the kind of thing, you know, that, that you run into. Um, that's actually really funny. I'm sorry. That's funny. Yeah. So, and here's another one. So my girlfriend, who's also in tech, she, she, you know, she Skypes me one day. She goes, oh my gosh, you need to look at this. And it was her Google search console account, which is basically Google's account for you as a webmaster. And it tells you yeah. the health of your website and where it's currently ranking you. And she shows me a screenshot that, and keep in mind, she's a coder. She's, she codes in WordPress. And in her, her Google um, search console, she was ranking for, and very high, is it a sin to poop? Which <laughs> makes like no sense. And so, so there's another weird one. And she's like, why is that? And I go to the, the URL that had that. And she said in the, this blog post about technology, everybody poops. Basically, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody's got their own stink was what she was trying to use with that phrase. But again, absence is good information. There isn't a lot in the, on the internet, obviously, about is it a sin to poop? So Google kind of looked at hers, her post, which had, you know, that phrase and probably, you know, don't commit this sin, meaning a coding sin. And it was like, well, it's the closest thing I've got. So we got yeah, Google. It was, yeah. it was ranking her. And so those are just funny things. And she's like, how do I get rid of that? And I'm like, take poop out of the blog post and it should magically go away. So yeah, so those are a few just weird things that that you know come up and That's and awesome. you know, the, the world of you know. yeah because it's a great it was a great point right that Google doesn't decipher you know we as humans can decipher oh she yes. means the fair phrase of this or yes or it's an analogy Google it doesn't do that it's a computer it's an AI it's black and white black right and white. Hope. Yeah. And I, I tell people, you know, especially clients that um, are in their own box, right? They're used to right. their own terminology and things like that. I'm like, you need to think of Google yeah. as a toddler or a five-year-old at best. Good. I love that. Right. So. And, and think about, they're not the expert across the room, you know, across the table from you. Speak to them as if they're a five-year-old. So you make sure that you're giving them the complete picture. And I'm not telling you to dumb down your text to the five-year-old level, but I'm saying reread what you're writing to make sure it is a complete picture. And you'll find that a lot of times you leave stuff out because you're assuming they already know that. Well, people might know that, but most likely people come into your site and do not. And Google certainly doesn't because it's looking at, you know, URLs as individually, then it compares that to the site and other references, but still it needs you to tell people, you know, and, and, and really articulate completely what you're trying to do. And yeah. when you start to think of things in that way, and then clients will reread what they sent me, they're like, Oh, that doesn't make sense at all. I didn't refer, I didn't even mention, you know, X, Y, and Z. I'm like, right. I know. So let's fix that. And, let's and, fix and it's just in a different way of approaching things. Um, I'm just thinking of like the word dog. You yes. Know? I mean, listening to us probably think you mean a puppy or a dog, but there's also D-A-W-G. Well, and I, I use hot dog as an example in training. So when you yeah. search for a hot dog, are you looking for the hot dog that you eat? Or are you looking for a hot dog as in I need to get my dog who's a hundred pound chocolate lab into the shade with some water? And the way Google figures out the difference is it's going to look at the words around hot dog to see what else you're talking about on that URL. You know, are you talking about water and shade or are you talking about mustard and ketchup? You know, that helps Google figure that out. And then it actually matches that up to the searcher and right. what they searched for before hot dog. Were they looking for picnic recipes or were they looking for, you know, with the weather in, in San Antonio, Texas today? So right. it's that combination that really helps everything come together. So let's talk about names. So my name, Heather Havenwood, feel free to Google me. Um, this will drop down. Google me. All right, so um, I'm lucky that my last name, Havenwood, there just really isn't my connection. Heather Havenwood, those two together, don't know is really. And now, listen, who's listening, don't like go create a name, Heather Havenwood, okay? Like, it's mine. But I'm just saying, like, there's no one really out there. You know, there's, mm -hmm. I, I'm lucky. I'm not like I have a Heather Smith or something. How do you work with people, or if you haven't had experience, um, who are, you know, authors and speakers and actors and actresses or whatever, who have a name that's like that, 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 that like mine, but like they, you know, it's like Jay Smith or something. So it, it's, it's again, making sure that you have active profiles, a good website, the Google understands that that's who you are. Um, and in really beefing up your, your, your online presence, right? And you can't be afraid of online to be able to do that. Otherwise you will live, you know, in, 
the sands and no one will ever find you. So before, if you Googled Rebecca Gill, I was all over page one through three to the point that my teenage daughter one day said something and I'm like, really? Go Google my name, see what shows up. And she looked at me, she's like, holy crap, you are like, you're like all over the first three pages. Well, then there was a Rebecca Gill, who I think is a professor on the West Coast, who had some issue and got involved in the Me Too movement, which is very popular right now. And, you know, it's, that's current news. Well, she's been taken over page one. And so now I'm fighting against her with page one. But the way Google gets around it is it will auto suggest things. So you start to type Rebecca Gill, it will like it will append it with SEO to see if you're looking for me versus her to try to help steer people to narrow down their search to figure out which one they really want. Okay. So you know, it's, 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 it, but that is again, me helping Google figure out who I am. I make sure that I have active profiles, whether it's my website or it's like Twitter or YouTube channel or my presentation slides on SlideShare. Those have SEO references in them because that's, you know, that's who I am. And I'm an SEO consultant educator. So Google can kind of piece that together. But again, if you don't have that out there and there's only like one or two references of me for me on the web, it's going to be really hard for Google to figure out who the heck I am and know how to use me in search. Let me ask you a quick question. I'm going to go down a certain, um, uh, sites. Okay. So like Facebook, LinkedIn, SlideShare and the world of ranking, like adding content out of those three, what ranks the highest? What does Google like the best out of those three? It's going to completely depend on, um, what you're posting about and who the target market is because different people use different networks, right? And Google knows this. It knows that the Facebook crowd isn't necessarily the teenagers anymore. It's more, right you know, middle-aged people, it's grandmas, <laughs> that's us. it's grandmas who are trolling their kids. You know, if you want, if you're, if you're like got a beauty product and you're trying to promote it to a 15 year old, you better be on Instagram. I mean, right. you know, cause Google knows that's where they're at. So, and, and so it, it, there isn't, there isn't one answer. If it's business, you know, LinkedIn's very popular. Um, the networks are different on what they allow, you know, the search engines to get to and what's public. But, you know, they're all helpful without question because, again, you're broadening your reach and you're um, expanding what's out there about you and what Google can find about you. But I would never encourage anyone if they're selling, you know, products to the middle age or to the senior set to go hang out on Instagram or Snapchat because that's not where their target market is. And it just kind of, you know, ends up being a waste of the time. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, no, you're right. You're completely right. I think SlideShare has got some weight to it though. Every time I post something on SlideShare, it's got some weight to it. I it does. Like. Yeah. And, and it's, you can easily, so if you're, if you're, if you want to know like, you know, what, what would be good for me, you know, my type of business, what I, or, you know, my pipe type of personality, start searching for whoever you compete with, right? Whoever, whoever's your, you know, your nemesis out there, where are they at? You know, what's showing up for them when you search for their name? You know, what's, is SlideShare popping up on page one or is it YouTube or is it something completely different? Because that will kind of give you some indicators on where you might want to spend your time because most likely you're serving the same market. Mm, so true. Okay. This is good. I could like go down this road forever. Um, cause I love it. I love it so much. Do you do anything with SEO inside of different worlds? What I mean by that is like Amazon's its own little world. It's got its own little, like Google's got its own world, you know? Yeah. And then you have Amazon's got its own world and Yahoo's got its own world. We all have these, like, these little worlds. I mean, Google's obviously the big one because who knows the 700 pound gorilla, but I mean, do you do any work with Amazon? I do not work with Amazon at all. I know that they've got their own algorithms and their specific ways to, um, you know, to rank in there. I will tell you though, that one SEO tactic is when you're trying to find keywords is to go to Amazon, right? To see if, if your product or, you know, would be referenced on Amazon, or even if you have a service that there would be books about, go look yeah. to see what's on Amazon. What keywords are Amazon, is Amazon suggesting to you? Like what kind of directory structure does it have? Because that can also, and it can always give you some good insights. Oh, that's really good. That's really good advice, actually. Um, so you're, you're suggesting go to Amazon to see what the like long tail keywords are exactly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's cool. So, okay, real quick. I have another quick question because this is kind of fun. I get to ask what I want. Um, <laughs> just, so what if someone's saying, hey, I really want to create a new course or create a new product, but I don't know if there is an audience for it. If there's a market for that, how do I know? It's a couple of things that you can do. Um, cause I do sell online courses and I did have a theme store, a, like a stock WordPress template store. So you could do, um, website templates. Cool. Um, so back in the day when I was doing that, because you, you think about again, who your target market is in that scenario, 
people who use those templates have more time than they do money, right? right. So typically smaller businesses, really micro, maybe one, two person, you know, offices, things like that. Well, I had a cottage in Northern Michigan. Those businesses with around that small community in Northern Michigan, they have more time than they have money. They're the perfect buyer for those templates. What's up there? Accountants, chiropractors, dentists, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, things like that. So those are who we, who I would say, okay, well, those, that's, that's potentially a great fit. How do I validate this? So then I would take those ideas as I drove through those rural areas and I would vet it to what people search for on Google. And you can go to Google for that. My favorite tool is KW Finder, which helps you look at search volumes. And so then I would look to see what the search volumes were for those ideas I had to vet that solution. Okay. Um, so and that, in that scenario, it worked great. Well, I also sell SEO courses online. So what would be the keyword phrases for those? The, the challenge what you have when you get to something like that is it is high tech. It changes constantly. There's always new words. So you can't always go off of search volumes because it may or may not be relevant since things are changing very quickly. And so you kind of have to do a balance there. Um, other places that you can kind of see, is there a demand for it? Like go to Quora. Quora's got a lot of questions and answers. You know, what kind of questions are people answering? Um, any, any site like that that has some like Q&A, but that's actually human putting in those questions, right? And that you can get to those. Then you can start to see the demand that the real human has. And, you know, again, look at that, create a, 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 I call it a seed list of ideas, and then compare that to actual search volumes to see if it's, you know, does have some relevant traffic. Oh, I love it. So Cora, and then what was the other one for Google? Um, so KW Finder to find search volumes, it will give you suggested searches. You can look for specifically like questions and, and um, Google auto suggestions and things yeah. like that. It will also show you who's on page one and two for each search phrase. And it can give you some indicators on why they're there. Backlink, social media activity, things like that. Really great tool. I love that. So KW Finder mm -hmm. and Cora. Cora is a good one. Yep. Okay, great. So um, awesome. Super awesome. So I thank you for this. We're running out of time. Um, but I do want to say who where can they find you if they're interested in getting courses, boot camps, uh, consulting, where can they find you? Uh, the best place to go is RebeccaGill.com, which is my personal site, but that kind of gives you an overview of me, my philosophy, and then that links over to my other properties. Okay, great. And what kind of companies do you work with? Do you work with individuals or, you know? I work with uh, solopreneurs, small businesses, all the way up to the enterprise. Yeah, you know, SEO, like I said, it's not dead. That's why I think, po I mean, one of the reasons I do podcasting is for SEO, mm -hmm. right? backlinks, different things. Before you go, I, I kind of want to ask you about backlinks. Are they still relevant? Back in the day, there was, you know, spamming backlinks and things like that. Um, are those still relevant today? What's happening with that world? They are still relevant. They are still the vote for the homecoming queen because they still count both at the main you know, website level and then specific, really at the individual pieces of content. We, yeah. we can't get away from backlinks because the web is basically content and links. And so it's really hard for the search engines to go away from using them as metrics in, in the algorithms. So if someone's listening going, okay, where can I should put my dollars? Where should I put my energy effort either or dollars? You know, where, where, what's the best ROI? where should they focus on the SEO work? Because there's a lot of different pieces. Yeah, so if you're going to do it yourself, be educated, right? Spend money on some type of training, whether it's video training or it's online courses or it's an in-person event, get some solid training. Um, and, and, you know, and that's where I would spend my money. I wouldn't go buy backlinks. It's going to come back and bite you in the rear every single time. Um, I, I wouldn't jump into hiring someone to write for you because they're not going to have their voice and they're not going to know the subject matter as well as you will right? So educate yourself, you know, and if, if you time isn't something that you have a lot of, then find a trusted consultant to help you and, you know, make sure that that consultant is asking you the questions like, who do you serve? Who is your target market? Because if they just jump to backlinks and things like that, they're the wrong consultant for you because they're not really going to be steering you in the right direction. That's really good advice. Um, so I was told, I read an article reason I was told, I read an article recently but sometimes when I read articles, I'm always like, I wonder if that's really true. Um, they said that, I think it was on HubSpot, I, I think, so don't quote me. But they said that um, the, the, the articles that were around 2,000 words approximately mm -hmm. got the best SEO. Is that 
So, expert here. Yeah, so like, the expert. is that true? So longer. Hey, it's Heather. Is your digestion feeling off? Are you often hungry even though you're eating enough and taking supplements? Are you struggling to burn off that last bit of stubborn fat that will not go away no matter how hard you diet or exercise? I guess I'm talking about myself here. See, it might be your gut. It was mine. That's why I am so excited to announce that P3OM, the Navy SEAL of probiotics, is now available at energywithheather.com. Look, tens of thousands of real people, including myself, has used P3OM to manage constipation, bloating, gas, acid reflux, abdominal pain, and much more. Look, as you'll learn when you go to energywithheather.com, P3OM uses unique and patent strand that has been proven in lab tests to deliver the right bacteria to your gut. So your body has what it needs to let go of all that fat. So look, what are you waiting for? Go to energywithheather.com. That's energywithheather.com. Thank you for listening to The Win with Heather Havenwood. Interested in coaching with Heather? Go to heatherhavenwood.com and sign up for a business discovery consultation. Here is your free gift for listening. Get three audio chapters of Heather's book, Sexy Boss, How Women Empowerment is Changing the Rulebook, when you text the word sexy to 7200. Again, text the word sexy, that is S-E-X-Y, to 7200 and receive your three audiobook chapters. Number is good only in North America. This is a sexy boss rap. This podcast is a copyright of Havenwood Worldwide, LLC.